Ready? Everybody ready? This meeting of the Oak Park City Council is called to order. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. City Clerk Ed Norris, please call the roll. Mayor McClellan. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Levine. Here. Council Member Seligson. Here. Council Member Burns. Here. Council Member Speech. Here. Uh, we welcome Council Member Seligson back. We missed you. Thank you. Uh, next thing is approval of the agenda. Motion to approve, please. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried. Next, we have the consent agenda. The following routine items are presented for City Council approval without discussion as a single item. Should any member wish to discuss any item, it must be dropped from the blanket motion and considered separately. A, regular council meeting minutes of October 20th, 2014. Business license new and renewal submitted for November 3rd, 2014. Library monthly report for September 2014. And meeting minutes of September 16th, 2014. Zoning Board of Appeals meeting minutes of September 23rd, 2014. Building Board of Appeals meeting minutes of January 16th, 2013. And June 9th, 2014. Recycling and Environmental Cons Conservation Commission meeting minutes of August 21st, 2014. Motion to approve. So moved. Support. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Carried unanimously. Um, we don't have an elected official here or communications, um, no ordinances. We're down to City Attorney Ebony Duff. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Good evening. Uh, this evening, I'd like to request authorization to obtain quotes to retain an appraiser for two of our pending Michigan Tax Tribunal appeals. These are two commercial cases. Both involve multiple parcels, and at this point, um, we would like to retain an expert to possibly testify on our behalf at the time of the fact hearing. And uh, we will come back to you with the quotes we obtained for formal approval. Okay. Um, a motion to request authorization to seek quotes. So moved. Second. Uh, any discussion or questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carried unanimously. Next, we are in the city manager portion. Uh, city manager Eric Tungay. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of council. Um, regarding the flood, I just want to give a couple of uh, pieces of information. Uh, you, you may still notice that FEMA is still present in city council chambers from 8 to 5, Monday through Thursday. Um, I assume they'll be here until the close of uh, flood response, which will be November 24th, um, because they keep telling me different things. They're not going to be here. They are, but I assume at this point they are. Um, this, the SBA folks are setting up in our community center. I believe they were there today as a first day. And you can apply for SBA loan assistance. One thing in, in the community center, room four. Okay. One thing I did want to say, too, is if you do apply for a loan and you are turned down, bring that denial back to FEMA, and they may be able to work with you based on your uh, being turned down for a loan. That's all that I have regarding that matter. Good. Okay. Um, Next is yours, I think. Yep. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, 15B is uh, Director Shefke, if you could join me at the podium. Payment for professional services to provide training and travel expenses for the installation of BSNA software. Mayor and Council. Um, this is for a payment for professional services to provide training and travel expenses for installation of the BSNA software. <clears throat> Attaches the invoice from BSNA software for travel and training expenses to, for the project that makes it about 84% complete. The cost of this training and travel expenses is $43,175. It is recommended that the invoice number 98148 for $43,175 
from BSNA software be approved. Funding is available in the municipal building bond account for this expenditure. And, and Madam Mayor, members of council, if I could just for clarification, when we say travel expenses, I just wanted to clarify that that yeah. is travel expenses of the consultants per the terms of their contract with us. And the travel expenses were only like seventeen hundred dollars, so fairly small. Okay. Um, so we need a motion to uh, approve paying this invoice from BSNA Software. So moved. Second, but I have a question. Okay. To time for discussion, Council Member um, Burns. This was the this. 43175 wasn't captured in the original quote that was submitted to us. 100% correct? correct. Okay. Yes. We have eight, eight days left of training. Okay. Any other questions? Roll call vote, please. Council Member Burns? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Levine? Yes. Mayor McClellan? Yes. Council Member Selickson? Yes. Council Member Speech? Yes. Motion carried. Madam Mayor, members of Council, Director <laughs> Shefke, if you could go through 15C, please. Yes, also is a request for authorization to pay for Veeam backup software for the new City Hall Public Safety Building. Um, after extensive review and for the backup software plan was established, the total amount is $5,872. This amount is covered in the budget on the City Hall Public Safety Budget. It is recommended that City Council approve to pay Red Level Networks for the Veeam backup software in the amount of $5,872. Funding is available in the municipal building bond account. This also was approved prior. We just want to bring it back in front of you to make sure that you knew that we're moving forward with it. This is to actually back up all of our virtual servers and to eventually get a budget to have them hosted off site. As of right now, there's no budget for that, but we can at least get this set up. Uh, motion to approve this payment. So moved. Second. Discussion or questions? Mayor Pro Tem. Yes, and not having um, <clears throat> the uh, capacity to have this hosted off site, does that impact our disaster recovery plan in any way? Well, it does if the entire building were to blow up, but we keep a backup tape that we take with us as of right now, and we do have a on site backup, so we have a disaster recovery, but if the building were to go, um, we would have the tape only. So the hosting is to get it off, off site so we have a true redundant backup that could be spun up within 15, 20 minutes, any other place, and we'd be back up and running. Thank you. Okay, um, further questions? Roll call vote, please. Mayor Pro Tem Levine? Yes. Mayor McClellan? Yes. Council Member Selickson? Yes. Council Member Speech? Yes. Council Member Burns? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. Uh, Madam Mayor, members of Council, the next Five items are the same in that they are uh, receipt and approval of the recommendations for the Special Assessment District 636, 637, 638, 639, and 640. Um, motion to receive and approve. So moved. Second. Um, discussion or questions? These are, uh, can you discuss the procedure for uh, making these decisions? Well, it's a lengthy procedure, as you know. Um, this would be the final stage in our uh, establishment of the Special Assessment District uh, for a variety of things, unpaid weed mowing invoices, delinquent water, special pickup, snow removal, and sidewalk uh, costs. Uh, this is the final stage. So we've had our public hearing stage where we uh, heard from uh, residents um, this would be the receipt and approval of all of these uh, particular uh, recommendations into the final roll that then will bill out and become part of the tax roll in the coming year. Right. And anyone who had an objection, it was carefully reviewed. And there is a letter included to that person explaining why, if that was put back on the tax roll, why that was done. Okay, um, we have a question. Yes. No, I just wanted to point out that they weren't all denied. No. There was one in there that would, you know, the acknowledged mistake that we made and right. we put it back. So they were all. Absolutely. They, they are your, carefully. Your uh, appeals were looked at and they were, they were given adequate uh, uh, discussion. 
Absolutely. Thank you. Um, so we have a motion on the floor. We have a second. Um, uh, all those in favor, please? Aye. 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 Motion carried. <clears throat> uh, we're into recreation. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Director, Recreation Director Julie Hall, if you could join me at the podium for a department update. Mayor, Council, I'm excited to be here tonight and give you an update on the past five months. Um, just briefly, uh, as you know, we have seven program areas, so I was just going to touch quickly on each of those so that you'd know uh, what our staff has been working on for the past few months. We'd um, take your and, time. We'd love to hear from okay. you. Okay. In our administration section, we've actually been focusing a lot on operations and streamlining how we're doing business. Um, we have transitioned from our require um, software program to um, a cloud-based software program, ActiveNet. So that transition has been done while the city has been doing their BSNA program as well. Um, We've actually been moving towards some more productive recreation advisory board meetings, and that's one of the items that's coming before you today was one of the things that came from staff uh, through that board uh, to you for consideration. We've also been working on building partnerships. Um, most recently, we've been working with the JCC, and I'll touch on those a little bit, um, Einstein Elementary, and um, Ferndale and Hazel Park on enhancing our inner local. In athletics, we continue to have a strong athletics program, both adult and youth, uh, with four days a week running throughout the summer, and we do have fall kickball program that's pretty popular and actually going to expand into Ferndale and Hazel Park this next year. Our youth program, we just recently met to, with our partners, Ferndale, Hazel Park, and Pleasant Ridge, to figure out ways to enhance the current youth programs and to uh, advertise our different offerings. For example, Hazel Park and Ferndale do some things that we don't to figure out how we can cross promote now that we have our interlocal agreement. Um, in our outdoor activities, our summer day camp this summer um, did have a lower season than usual. Um, some of that was early on in the season when some of the schools weren't out as early, so we de definitely saw a little bit of drop there, but picked up throughout the season. Um, facility rentals in our outdoor activities is what's going to be before you in the next item. And um, that came out of staff discussion, and uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that uh, in the next section. Our instructional activities, which are our... Um, programs and classes. We've actually had pretty solid registration and, and since we've had our new program in place, we've had 509 registrations just since September 1st in the new system. So um, we definitely are getting uh, terrific use out of that and we will have some more advanced reporting. So I'm looking forward to sharing that with you during the budget season. Um, special events, uh, Independence Day Parade and Fun Fest um, for everyone that participated. We had an excellent turnout. Um, I think the, the one big thing that came out with staff is we're looking for a way to expand our 5K and, and look for some, for some new plans with that. Um, the Halloween Trunk and Treasure that we just had this past Friday, certainly the weather didn't cooperate, but... Uh, we still estimate that we had about 1,500 in attendance, um, many people waiting out in the rain uh, to get in. So uh, definitely having success. Next year, we plan on adding the dog days at the pool at the end of the season and enhancing. Well, explain that one. Uh, it's basically for those uh, dog lovers that their dogs don't get the opportunity to go to the pool and swim. You see it in a lot of communities, but we'll put our own spin on it. So at the end of the pool season, um, residents will be able to bring their dogs out. And um, we do have the zero depth entry. And so it's not like you have to throw them in the deep end or anything. But um, we, we will add that program. And we're looking at some other programs as well for this next summer. Senior services. Uh, we have been uh, working uh, with area um, partners, uh, specifically talking with the JCC about how we can cross-promote our programs. 
um, met with them just a couple weeks ago. And then with Ferndale and Hazel Park, they're actually going to start a bingo shuttle to get um, seniors over to our program as well as for our fitness events. So we're definitely looking to work with our partners. And then lastly, the swimming pool. Uh, the summer was a rough summer for the swimming pool. We definitely, weather-wise, had 38 days of open swim. Our classes did well, um, but we certainly um, needed to have our heater working, and that's one of the things in the renovation for this next year that should most certainly help us. And then we're also looking to um, potentially partner with the JCC on uh, offering their swim um, lesson program uh, since many of our staff already work there. So um, that's it in a nutshell of what we've been doing for the past five months. So, Director, I just wanted to clarify a couple things. The, you know, the going back to the interlocal agreement with the city of Ferndale. So that's an item that um, we'll be bringing back to you for, for your input and uh, hopefully your approval. But what we are looking at doing is expanding that interlocal agreement to include the city of Hazel Park. And all that will mean is it'll replicate what we did with Ferndale. It'll mean that we will provide access to our recreation resources for resident rates, and then they will do the same over there. Um, and we're working that out. We'll be bringing mm -hmm. that back. Um, uh, with regards to the pool, this is something, as you know, this was one of our tough <coughs> budget decisions in this year's budget. So. Uh, I presume that we will uh, make the repairs not only to the heater but obviously the pool infrastructure itself. Having said that, the assistant city manager and I and Julie mm -hmm. have talked uh, about trying to squeak out one more year. Um, and we'll be coming back to you mm -hmm. if that's the case. So, Can we get the heater this coming summer? The, the heater is a no-brainer. That one has to be accomplished but the rest of the infrastructural repairs that's what we're talking about so. so more about that at budget time I think the kitchen also got fixed up it did yes that it was did. one of my sore Thanks. points DPW definitely helped us out on that one so Good. the other thing I wanted to mention too is we have set up monitors in uh, the hallway to, to <coughs> recreation and also uh, technical and planning and Julie's been tasked with uh, placing the schedule for that day into the monitors every single day so our residents see a uh, clear and mm -hmm. consistent and clean message, not on some chalkboard or whatever else. So it's improved tremendously. <laughs> Looking spiffy over there. Mm -hmm. uh, question, uh, council member speech. Um, first, first to um, the city manager's comment, it actually is a different experience when I go over there. Um, I'm at the community center quite a bit and um, people do know where they're going. There's people to direct them, and so I commend you on that. Thank and you. I know I've known Julie since when my children were mm -hmm. in, in Ferndale Rec. So um, question about the interlocal agreement. It, when, when people come over to us from Ferndale or Hazel Park or what have you, is there a difference in price that when they participate over here, or how does that work, one? And then the other question is um, if um, they're busing people over or what have you, is that on, on their? Um, recreation department or on us? Okay, first to your first question. Uh, with Ferndale, we currently have an interlocal agreement. We don't yet. We're in the process of working one out with Hazel Park. Okay. So to answer the question on Ferndale, we're both treated as residents. Okay. So if we our um, residents go over there, they're still treated as residents and get to follow any of the resident timelines for registration. Okay. Likewise, the same thing with Oak Park, our Ferndale residents coming to Oak Park. Um, your second question um, was... For Hazel Park, when they are, you said something about bingo. Oh, when when we them. all run the smart transportation program. Okay. So basically it would be just setting up a time similar to how we do medical runs or errands. We would just have that built into the weekly schedule that um, if there's a yoga class here or a different class that we don't offer at one of the other centers, we would have it built into our schedule to take our residents there. And likewise, um, bingo is uh, much bigger in our community, so they would probably come uh, one of our days to to participate. This is something in the future you're planning to do this. Yes, oh, we okay, actually just that. met about it and are working it into the schedule right now. Okay. Just a note, um, I take the um, 
the aerobics class mm -hmm. over there and just love it. And there are more and more people there all the time. We're putting chairs along the side wall now. Mm -hmm. um, and I tried um, registering online, found it real easy, very user friendly. I had uh, registered for a class in Birmingham that I couldn't figure out their computer system and had to come in and register, and ours was terrific. Great news. Thank you. And Madam Mayor, if I could just elaborate on that. You know, it, it goes really beyond recreation, but we've made a tremendous investment in our technology and our systems, and I think that's starting to pay off when we can finally get into BSNA on the financial software end of things, these kinds of ease of movement pay your bills, pay the water bill, whatever it may be, are going to be much more profound than they are now. Mm -hmm. It just so happens that, you know, we just got into the full transition, um, and probably after the first of the year, it'll start becoming more and more and more uh, customer friendly. I do want to offer one more thing. Another question. Yes. Uh, council member speech. Yes. Um, with the swimming pool, has there been any discussion about um, specific days for, like, um, um, consideration of maybe single sex days or um, maybe only men, men and women, you know, separate? That was one of our um, topics of discussion when we met with the JCC about potentially contracting with them for lifeguards mm -hmm. management and what options there may be is that they're currently staffed um, to do those uh, types of swim days at um, the JCC and we are not. Um, they also are year round whereas we onboard people for a few months and half of our um, lifeguards and one of our WSI instructors actually works already at the JCC. So there's some opportunity uh, if the logistics work out and they have what our schedule is and uh, we met at the pool last week to, for discussion. So there is potential. We've talked about it. We do have some screening issues, so we would have to, a couple of fence lines that we would have to um, screen in order to even do that with the guard situation as well. That was one question that a couple of residents asked me about, and also um, adult only swim times when mm -hmm. there wasn't a lot of children. Um, so just something yes, to consider. Yes, those are definitely on the table. Mm -hmm. Question, Mayor Pro Tem. Just wanted to ask if there are any plans to uh, <clears throat> improve our uh, resident access and possibly uh, including lessons and things at the skate, at, uh, at Friday skating? That is one of our items. We have not tackled that yet. Um, it's on the list, but we have not tackled that yet. Okay. Madam Mayor, if I could, Mayor Pro Tem, you bring up one of my uh, pet peeves, um, and it has been since we re-signed our contract with Honey Baked Ham. Needless to say, I'm not thrilled with um, how they've offered uh, access to that ice arena, and it definitely is something that we're gonna mm -hmm. we're gonna work on. Um, uh, part of that agreement calls for them to offer those kinds of classes, uh, market those kind of classes to our residents, and to date, I've not seen them do as good a job as they promised. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the one time that you could go skate was something like Thursday from 11 to 12 when the kids were in school. <laughs> so that was a little mm -hmm. iffy, that one. We're very excited yeah. with what you've done in a very short time. Great. Thank you. Um, it's, it's amazing to see all of this cooperation and all of this outreach. Mm -hmm. It's heartwarming. Thank you. Okay. And uh, Director Hall, if you'll do the uh, 15J for me, please. Okay. Part of uh, what I worked with staff on was to get their input on uh, areas that they felt we could make some changes and improve our customer service and access to our facilities. One of those items uh, had to do with increasing facility rentals. And specifically uh, with our shelter rentals, we currently rent in 12-hour blocks, which when you rent in 12-hour blocks, there's really no opportunity for increasing rentals because you only have so many days and you have the whole time frame. So um, due to that, uh, staff developed some time blocks. Uh, we took it to the advisory board and they made some adjustments. Uh, we had three blocks originally. Um, they suggested two. Uh, we worked around the fees and the um, 
I believe it's the second page in your packet, shows the proposed fees um, with the previous fees. One of the primary differences is we're not offering um, different prices for weekday shelter rentals and weekend shelter rentals. The difference uh, was 10 or $20, and it really didn't make a lot of sense from an administrative um, side. So we're proposing one fee um, per the time blocks that are available. So explain the time blocks. So previously, you could rent, and it was basically from 9 to 10 at night. Uh, what? 9 in the morning until 10, 10 at, at night. night. Mm -hmm. And prior to um, my arrival, I obviously saw it this summer, but staff has been seeing it for a number of years, is that we have people that rent, but they don't show up until late in the afternoon, and we book pretty quickly. I mean, obviously, we're starting our shelter bookings next week. And so this will let us have a lunch Basically, time, it allows that, time. yes, and especially with people that want to have um, uh, kids' birthday parties that maybe don't want to be out there at night and just want to do something for lunch. Uh, so this allows us a 9 to 3 and allows us an hour break in between to make sure we can clean all uh, and we'll have our staff overlapped at that time to clean the facilities and then have a second six-hour block in the evening. Um, you, it does not keep anyone from still renting for the whole day, uh, and they would actually get a 10% discount if they do that because we don't have to clean in between, uh, but it does uh, open it up for more opportunities throughout the summer. And less downtime. Correct. Uh, members of council, if I could just elaborate on one more thing. You would normally see a fee schedule change like this in the annual fee schedule review that you've done for the last few years that I've been here. This one was necessitated early, and if you could explain why. Uh, because traditionally we have started our shelter reservations in the fall, and typically the first um, Monday in October. However, we were just wrapping up the season, and so I did push that back to allow us time to evaluate it with the Rec Advisory Board and with staff and, and then bring it uh, for your consideration. But we do have our shelter rentals um, scheduled uh, for booking starting next Monday. So we would have to get uh, forms changed and packets ready to go. Um, could I back up just to the more productive advisory board meetings is something that I think is wonderful. What are you hoping to, um, to get out of that? Well, one of our goals for this year is um, the master plan update. So uh, we've uh, not had a Parks and Rec master plan for a few years. Uh, we've already talked about initial timelines. Uh, this next meeting we will use to get a more formal timeline for that process. Wonderful. That will allow you to get some grant opportunities. Sure, certainly, is it's helpful, uh, as, and as well as our partnerships. Um, but that definitely is the first step. Okay, back to rental fees. Are we um, are we ready for a vote? Okay, uh, motion to approve the revised facility fees. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion or questions, Mayor Pro Tem. I just wanted to ask, I, first of all, I think this was really uh, clear thinking and appreciate uh, our, the whole idea of doing something that makes a lot of sense, makes it uh, our park more available to more people to run. And, Mike. Uh, and, and, oh, excuse me. I just wanted to, to tell you how much I appreciate the thought that went into this, how this will uh, help to make our, our park shelters more available to people and to uh, be also be able to improve revenue um, and drop the price for residents here. Mm -hmm. I like the, the way this is set up. Mm -hmm. I have a question about the flat $30 fee for the non-residents and whether you consider it a percentage differential or will be doing that in the future. As far as um, the higher, I, I, I actually proposed a bit higher, but um, through the uh, process of going through the board, they, they definitely felt we might um, um, I guess alienate some of our non-residents that, that do tend to come in and fill the slots. Um, but certainly I think it's um, a document that can evolve and as we see how this uh, next summer goes, uh, we can certainly address Evaluate it in the next again. cycle. 
How do we compare to other cities with as far as these rentals? We actually are right in line with uh, some of our partners. We're still less than um, Southfield uh, for similar size. Our, our Shelter One uh, rents for about 75 more um, a time slot than what we're doing. Uh, but we felt this was a reasonable increase and, and keeps us in line with most of our surrounding community and doesn't put us in the higher tier. Question, um, council member speech. Yes. Um, what, what is it the goal? Like how many are you trying to rent out per, per year or per season? Do you have a goal for that? Uh, I would certainly like to be in, in the 90% range when we up these blocks. We currently are already there. Um, we have uh, 60 dates right now if you look at the number and then with the three shelters we have 180 opportunities um, so we're actually uh, gonna going to double those so um, certainly with shelter one I don't foresee it uh, being an issue we are getting calls and usually booked well before June for those rentals. So and do we hold certain ones for nonprofits or it's just it first come first serve? It has been first come first serve. Okay. Um, there is you will see there's a in early June we did not change um, at the bottom of that page the first two weeks of June during the week. Um, we they're free to Oak Park school gr groups. It should be under the proposed rental fees. And then the first two weeks of June, we have half resident rate to non-Oak Park um, school groups as well. So we do have some that we would work with. Okay. Wonderful. Question, um, Council Member Burns. Um, not really a question, just a comment. I just want to thank you for your diligent work on these mm -hmm. fees and the ideas. And I think that the increase in the damage deposit will give people the incentive to make our job, so your job, mm -hmm. less hard at the end of mm -hmm. their day. So Brilliant. thank you for your work yeah. on that. Great improvements. It's kind of exciting. Um, ready for a vote? Okay, roll call a vote, please. Mayor McClellan? Yes. Council Member Seligson? Yes. Council Member Speech? Yes. Council Member Burns? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Levine? Yes. Passed unanimously, and thank you for your work. Thank you. Very impressive, everything you've done. Hmm. Uh, Madam Mayor, members of council, this completes the city manager report okay. section of the agenda. Okay, we have call to the audience. If anyone would like to speak, we have a three minute time limit. <laughs> we have our Oak Park Arts <laughs> and Cultural Commission. All right. Good evening, Mayor, Madam Mayor. McClellan, Mayor Pro Tem, and the members of City Council. My name is Dawn Sketch. I live at 24141 Cloverlawn here in Oak Park, and I am speaking on behalf of the Oak Park Arts and Cultural Commission, which is known as OPAC. If you want to like us on Facebook, O P A A C C. Thanks. Okay, first of all, I'd like to say we have new artwork here in the City Hall that was just put up today. The new artwork is by photographer Ron Warren, who is also a resident of Oak Park. And he has done a lot of the photography for our events here for the Arts Council for many of our events for the last couple of years. We are seeking future artists to come and promote their artwork as well. Um, you can find applications online on the city's website. You can find out more in the links uh, through City of Oak Park's Facebook page and OPAC's Facebook page, or you could come to the City Hall to get an application, and uh, the artwork would be up for either two to three months. It will be juried by the Oak Park Arts and Cultural Commission. So that changes over a few times a year. Next, I'd like to mention that we just booked a th our third Thursday event for this month, November. It'll be November 20th at Sahara Restaurant. We are going to have 
uh, space baby who will be performing and you can enjoy a wonderful evening at Sahara. Uh, that will be, again, thir the third Thursday of November, November 20th, starting at 6.30 in the evening, and Space Baby performs indie, folk, rock kind of music. The Oak Park Arts and Cultural Commission meetings are usually on the fourth Wednesday of the month, but because that coincides with Thanksgiving Eve this month and Christmas Eve next month, or Christmas Day next month, we've decided to combine the two, and that meeting will be on December 10th. Everybody is welcome. That starts at 7 p.m. in the community center. And people who are interested in helping out, I know, I'm, I'm working my three minutes. <laughs> the Summer Fest, we already started working on our Summer Fest for 2015. We need your help. We need lots of volunteers people who want to help out with the subcommittees. We have a variety of subcommittees, including, sorry, sponsorships, performers, art fair, activities, food, and promotion. The promotion group, we really need a strong group of people. And that will be right before our OPAC meeting. So again, that will be on December 10th, and that will start at 6 p.m. So if anybody is interested out there, please come and join us. And the final thing that I'd like to say is thank you. Thank you so very much to Mayor Marion McClellan to get us going, to Kimberly Marone for our previous community and economic development person, Emily Dorr, and all of the people who were helping out with our DIA Inside Out. Now, it was supposed to end last week, but some of the pieces are still here. Thank you so very much for everybody who participated. Thank you, John. <laughs> Dynamo. Anyone else? Joyce Bannon. Joyce Bannon at 10611 Troy. Uh, again, I'm going to ask, uh, registration is going to be only done online, or is that going to be able to be done at the at the rec recreation department also? Because if it's only online, you're... No, no, it's both. Okay. Mm -hmm. That was my question. No, oh, that was quick. <laughs> that was quick. Well, that just the online is an option. Okay. Uh, always taking registrations at, um, at the community center. Have many seniors that don't have computers. Absolutely. We, we work both ways, techie and non-techie. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Um, I have a few things to let you know about. Uh, one, we are beefing up our blight enforcement. We're going to get faster results when um, maybe an absentee landlord isn't keeping good track of his property. We are moving towards civil infractions rather than misdemeanors. We've been talking about this for a year now, and um, we're moving toward that option. Uh, it will be faster than waiting for it to go through court. Uh, if someone is a chronic problem, it will eventually wind up in the courts, but um, this will get our properties cleaned up quickly. Uh, we, are, we have met with DTE Energy uh, we were not satisfied with the number of recent outages and the delayed in, delay in many repairs that we've seen in Oak Park. We had a vice president of DTE here and we um, gave him an earful. And uh, they are quickly working on fixing the things we're not happy with because they don't want another meeting with the mayor. So, um, through. Um, as we just heard, uh, Director Julie Hall has an interlocal agreement between Oak Park, Ferndale, and Hazel Park coming up for the swimming pool. There will be some improvements like the heater. Uh, you can register online or come to the Recreation Center, and there is a link that uh, we'll put on the website. Uh, if you go to that link, it's really easy to register. Uh, the library had another successful book sale. The proceeds go to uh, library programs, 
The proceeds go to buy our magazines for our magazine section. Uh, we also have hired three monitors to make sure everyone who comes to the library feels safe and welcome. There is a new code of conduct, conduct on the door, and we expect everyone to be respectful and use the library for purposes that it was built for. So we're going to see some improvements there, and I think we'll get the library director uh, to give us an update after he's gotten his feet on the ground. The most important thing is vote tomorrow. Get your friends to vote. Get your relatives to vote. Anyone that you can find to vote, because your vote does make a difference. It matters who our elected officials are. And whatever way you're going to vote, get out to vote. Don't let them tell you it doesn't matter. It does. Uh, it's critical that you vote. Um, we, we were out knocking doors and passing out lit today to get people out to vote. And um, anything you can do to help will be appreciated. And that is the longest one that we have. We'll go to Mayor Pro, Pro Tem Levine. I'd like to uh, <clears throat> just note that I was just overwhelmed Friday uh, with uh, the uh, turnout and uh, a lot of happy faces for the Halloween spectacular. Um, just, uh, it was really nice on a cold and wet evening to be able to provide a warm and welcoming place for our families and so many people showed up. The parking lot was packed. People were lined up to get in, but uh, everybody came away with love. Candy and happy smiling faces and I just uh, want to thank all of the uh, volunteers and staff that made that happen and uh, just really appreciate that event, especially on a night like that. Uh, just once again, I'll reiterate the importance of voting. If you haven't voted already, please join me at the polls tomorrow. I always wait to go out there. Um, and be sure to tell everyone that you, you see, uh, neighbors, family, friends, uh, you know, I'm voting, and you should too. So uh, please get out to vote. Uh, it's powerful. It protects your freedoms. It is your freedom. Do that tomorrow. Thank you. Uh, council member speech. Um, I'll go ahead and say it first. Make sure you vote. But also, it's getting darker earlier, and I've been noticing um, it's, it's not too cold yet, so there's a lot of kids out there still playing and trying to have fun in the leaves. Please try to drive slow in the neighborhoods. I don't know what it is, but people are speeding. You should not be going more than 25 miles on the residential streets. And um, we have kids out there, so please be careful. Slow down. Um, and remember to turn your lights on because it's really dark on our residential streets. Um, please be careful. And as it gets colder, please remember your neighbors. We have uh, elderly people out there and they may need help with snow and ice, et cetera. So just please, as, as we come, we've come out of this flood and everything else, you know, just remember we got together on that. We need to stay together. Thank you. Council Member Burns. Thank you everyone for coming out this evening. Please be mindful, we did change the time on Sunday. This is daylight saving time. Our kids are out um, later in the evenings. Please be mindful of them. And also, please vote. The local elections, in my opinion, are more important than the presidential elections because the local elections affect us on a day-to-day -day basis. It doesn't matter who you vote for, just as long as you get out and exercise your right to vote. And everyone, please be safe. Have a pleasant evening. Amen. Council Member Seligson, welcome back. Yeah, ditto on the voting. Uh, it doesn't matter who you vote for, as long as you vote for the people that I like. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, I just want to tell you that, uh, you know, just contrast, I suppose, being away for a little while, you really get to feel the contrast. A couple of years ago, we were sitting here and wondering, you know, how we're, how we're going to get through the next year, really, about two, three years ago is really looking pretty bleak and so many exciting things are happening in the city it's just a pleasure to see yeah. so everybody have a good night stay warm thank you so much thank you also check your polling location the branch went out with a map uh, so that you don't wait in line in the wrong spot check your polling location just to be sure um, we will have people spotting out there but if you can check it ahead before you plan to vote save your trip uh, there being no further business to come before this council, this meeting is adjourned.